morning, beloved. To focus on our psalm, our responsorial psalm today, but especially also just a quick word of reminder as um, we, with the gospel today, with the appointing of the twelve. One of the lessons we always learn from this passage, wherever, whatever gospel it comes up in, is that when there's something important that we have to do in our life, an important decision we have to make and then go carry out, the first thing we should do, and the most important thing we have to do, is what Jesus did, and go pray to the Father, right? And some, you may have to spend all night with the Father, or a long time praying, day after day after day, before you you get clarity and peace on what he wants you to do and the decision he wants you to make. And this was an important decision, right? Jesus, Jesus had many disciples following him and studying his way of life and trying to do what he did and live as he was living. But he only, he had to choose, and he only chose 12 to become apostles, to be his kind of closest ones, that he was the ones he was going to entrust his whole ministry and life to when he was gone. And so a pretty big decision to make. You've got to choose the right ones, right? And he, this, and he chose Judas Iscariot too, right? For an, some reason. Uh, maybe he just saw his potential, what he could have been, you know? Uh, so, uh, and it's interesting. Um, so the most important thing, just that quick side note. When we have to do something that's important, we, the first place we've got to go is not to see what other people think, but to sit down quietly with our Heavenly Father and to see what He thinks and what He wants us to do and spend as much time as necessary to pray. Uh, and this, we've, we get this usually on some of the different feasts of the apostles too, this psalm, Psalm 19, speaking about how the heavens declare the glory of God. The heavens declare or proclaim God's glory. How do they do that? Just by doing what they were made to do, right? It says, the, the psalmist says that, you know, not a word or a discourse or a voice is not heard. Their voice goes out through all the earth, throughout all the earth. What voice? Do you, do you hear all of creation, all of heaven speaking right now? No, but the, the proclamation of, their, of the action, right? The proclamation of their actions of, as they are doing, not just that they're existing, but they are doing what they are made to do. And that's the same was true of us. We were made, all of creation was made to proclaim and declare the glory of God, not just because we simply exist, but when we are doing what we were made to do, doing what we were made to do. And, and the simple answer for that is what were, what were we made to do? We were made to do what Jesus did. <laughs> that's why he came and, and that's why God became flesh. We forgot what we were supposed to be doing. We were, you know, we had gone astray. We weren't living up to, to what we're, we're, we're made in the image and likeness of God. So we're made to be the image and likeness of God on the earth. So we're made to be like God on the earth. And the more we are living like God on earth, the more we're manifesting his image. He is clearly seen. And, and so Jesus came to show us how to do that. So when we do what Jesus did and say what Jesus said, then we are doing what we were made to do. And then we are proclaiming. Remember, Jesus said... And when he sent the 12 out, he said, go and proclaim this message. The kingdom of God is here. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Drive out demons. Every place you go, wish peace upon it. So, so always catch that connection. He said, when you go, make this proclamation. The proclamation is in word and in action, Right? speaking about the truth of who God is and the difference he makes in your life and that his kingdom is here. We can live in it and under his authority right now. And then doing those actions of the kingdom, praying for people, praying, praying, praying for people on the spot, in person. Put your hand on their shoulder. Break the social distance rules. Who cares? There's no dis social distancing in the spirit, you know. Pray for them. You can even stand at a distance and pray for them, you know. Uh, there's, Peggy's been going on Fridays and there's different stories on Fridays when they go and do street evangelization and just simply ask people, can I pray for you? And they pray from a distance and they say, oh, I felt, I felt hands on my lower back in this heat. Well, nobody was touching them, but God was. Yeah? 
the most important thing is to pray, be willing to pray for people and get out of the comfort zone, get out of our limitations, our self-limitations that we give and put on ourselves, and do what Jesus did. He proclaimed and spoke about the truth of who God is, his kingdom among us, the difference that makes in our life, and he prayed for people to be healed, to be filled with peace, to be, to ra be raised from the dead. He prayed for them to be free of demonic influence and possession. You know, especially if you know anybody who's suffering from any type of addiction, there's usually a demon involved there. That's what you're praying against when you're praying for their freedom, for their healing, to, for them to be free of addiction. It's not just breaking bad habits. You're trying to drive out a demon, demonic influence from their life. There's a lot of other examples, huh? But when we're doing what Jesus did, now we're declaring and proclaiming the glory of God on the earth. You know, we're, we're, we're living as image, true images, and we're living in the likeness of God. We're living like God on the earth when we do what Jesus did.